Hi everyone, welcome to the Daily M. Did you know that there are 200,000 nerve endings in your feet? Uh, lately, actually this year, I've been noticing a lot about um, our feet in class as I teach. Uh, I think over the years there's sensitivity to the knees. I even found like over the years we've had more sensitivity in the hips. I don't know why I'm really seeing that there's a lot of uh, weak feet. And think about how important uh, our feet are. In fact, there's acupressure for feet. Um, we do soaks with our feet in order to detox, and uh, we work on our feet, you know, for good for good alignment. So feet, they're so important. It's how we how we walk in the world. It's um, how we we properly um, hold our frame. Uh, it's it's where we meet the earth and how grounded we are. So it's so important that we take care of our feet. And I see it especially in savasana. Uh, you can notice everyone's feet, they're either splayed too wide, sometimes the toes are kind of curled in, sometimes one foot is wider than the other, um, and that is a message about what's going on with the knees. It could be a message about what's going on with the hips, all the way up to the shoulders. It's all connected. So your feet, so important. So make sure in class you stand in standing series with your feet together, side by side, not a V. You want your big toes and your ankle bones together. And then in awkward pose, you have to be certain that your feet are flat. And when you're going to the first part, it's on your heels. When you're going into the second part, you're on the balls of your feet and your heels are not splayed out. Your heels are directly behind your knees. And then in third part, be very careful that when you bring your knees together that you aren't turning your heels out. Gotta really squeeze your knees together and use your inner thighs and your heels are still invisible to you in the front mirror. So using your feet uh, in a separate leg stretching, making sure everyone, the edges of your feet, you feel your feet firm on the floor. So really exercise underneath your feet and flexion. A lot of postures were asking you to point your toes, to flex your feet. So make sure that you do that and gain that flexibility of that. Remember, you're trying to isolate and gain mobility in that part of your body so that it doesn't pull against the tendons and everything around your knee and all the way up the body, hips, shoulders, neck even. And uh, of course, there's fix firm. Making sure we always ask you to sit down, kneel down position first because we want your feet to be straight back behind you, right? And then you open up your heels. Make sure there's no space between your heels and your hips and don't change your feet. Don't flex them out. Don't curve them in. And if there's pressure and it hurts, put the weight in your hands and slowly start to go back and gain that flexibility in the top of your feet. So there's another one too. It's stretching posture. So years and years ago, I had... Um, surgery on my right foot. Uh, they shaved two spurs on the top of my foot and one on the side of my foot. And I remember the exercise that the doctor had me do. He had me sit on the floor. I had to tie a string around my big toe and then place the other part of the string around a doorknob and just let my foot hang. So I was tractioning my big toe. So think about stretching posture, using your index and middle finger, placing it in between your big toe, second toe. So I know you're using it to pull, right? Stretching your spine, stretching the back of your legs, but you're also using it to traction your big toe. So you have to know everybody, everything in your Bikram Yoga practice means something. And I know we say smiling, happy faces, but we want smiling, happy feet. So make sure everyone you're concentrating um, on your feet and you'll have good alignment throughout your whole body. Thanks for listening.